Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite cryptocurrencies recently, and that is Qredo. Now, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but this is one of the best cryptocurrencies out there. I'm not trying to show you my coins, but based on the tokenomics and what I've been researching, I'm loving it. Obviously, there's everyone has their own favorite cryptocurrencies. I'm quite a big Luna advocate. I quite like um, different DeFi projects, but Qredo is quite uh, taken my attention recently. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why that is. So uh, I've loaded up Curido's website here. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right, but I've loaded up their website and I want to have a look at and show you guys what I've learned about this project as of recently. So firstly, their website is pretty cool. Am I right? Um, it has, they have a specialist team here. It's powered by decentralized custody. Um, has cross-platform liquidity, interoperable, it's cross-chain. Uh, and this is probably the most important thing you're going to see today, guys, the decentralized MPC aspect. And I'm going to explain that to you later in the video, but uh, I'm going to show you how um, Qredo essentially solves a billion dollar problem. And you should probably read this for yourself, guys. Um, I think this is a very good read. I'm just going to briefly show you what it looks like. This is probably one of the best reads on Qredo you could possibly do. Um, it really shows uh, the bridging between traditional finance and decentralized finance. Uh, so this is basically how Curido is built. There's a layer one blockchain, then there's Curido's blockchain, and then there's Curido's decentralized messaging. Uh, and these are its technology pillars. And I recommend having a look at all their white papers. So you haven't got the time, you haven't got this, you haven't got the effort to look through that, which is why I've done it all for you guys. So don't worry about that. We'll have a look at their protocol roadmap in the end. Um, but currently I wanna go through Curido. So let's start briefly and let's have a look at their uh, positioning on coin market cap. I think it's always best to look at a project to see how much value they have. Um, when you're comparing it to its competitors, especially, you should be looking at a project, you should be comparing the tokenomics, the fundamentals, and then making your decision whether you believe it is valued at that or should be valued more. So in the case of solving a billion dollar problem, if I show you right here, the market cap is only 134 million, right? So if it really solves a billion dollar problem, should it be 10 times the market cap? Yes, no, that's not for me to decide, but I'm just gonna give you the breakdown, give you everything to do with Credo, and you make your own financial decisions. Nothing, nothing on this channel is financial advice, nor will it ever be. Uh, but anyway, enough said, let's get into it. Uh, so we're looking at the Credo chart right now. Uh, I think in the last 24 hours, it's down 1.6%. Uh, that's the whole Bitcoin market crashing. So stay tuned. I've got a technical video coming out and it's pretty much everything you need to go and know about in the market right now. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are Bitcoin shorts and leverage shorts, and they've actually put together a nice bit of compila like compilation of research for me. And I'm going to explore it with you guys further in the video. Uh, it should be coming out in a few hours or so, but make sure to give that a uh, check out, guys. But anyways, let's look at Curido's chart. Um, let's take the year to date chart. I know it had a quite a nice run. Um, yeah, same time as Cadena, to be honest with you, um, in the same kind of, in fact, its run was probably slightly before Cadena, but it's had its nice run up, right? Uh, it's had its nice run up and we're back in the accumulation phase. Uh, in terms of technicals, I'll go through this later, but I do not believe we have reached the bottom yet. It might look like a double bottom to you guys, but the way I'll explain it to you is we need to look at where most accumulation has happened. And to be honest with you guys, most of the accumulation was in the 2.8 to the 3.2 price range. So I think we'll see strong hands picking up Carita there. Um, I think, uh, so let's talk about uh, Josh Goodbody is uh, the CEO of Curido. And in terms of uh, as a team experience, uh, he's worked with Binance, Huobi. He's got an amazing CV. He is a, a very big pioneer in the space. He's worked with a lot of these centralized exchanges. And I'm gonna get into that later, why Curido is important. Um, let me start off with looking at whether or not it really solves the billion dollar problem, right? So I've done a thread on Twitter, if I show you guys. Um, and I'm just going to take you guys through that thread. Uh, I think it's a very good thread and you guys should definitely go to my Twitter and check it out because I'm always posting on Twitter before I post on YouTube. Uh, that's just the way I do things. And 
I'm going to show you the thread. Also, I have a giveaway on my Twitter. I'm giving away $350 worth of Curido. Um, mention that you've come here from my YouTube. Uh, I'm going to put you in the uh, random name generator and I'm going to be deciding who gets this $350 worth. So let's go to my profile. And what we need to look at is this is my profile. Guys, we're only three days old and we have 150 followers. That's insane, guys. So anyway, uh, here is my giveaway. All you have to do is follow. You have to retweet this thread, tag your favorite creator underneath and comment what crypto you would like to see next. Uh, so on to Curido. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about is uh, it's all in here in detail, but I just want to briefly mention a few points to you guys. I think you guys need to know. So multi-party computation is basically where multiple parties uh, make calculations and whatnot with their data. Curido does this differently in the sense that it's a decentralized MPC. So the parties don't actually need to trust each other. They don't need to reveal their individual output, but nor do they need to trust each other. Now, that's quite important in decentralized finance. Um, in that way, the best way to imagine it is uh, centralized exchanges, institutions. They don't need to trust one another to move assets, to hold assets. Uh, it's all in one person's possession and they know who they are. Uh, there's no one controlling your assets. And um, yeah, Curator has a lot of security as well. Uh, it breaks down the private keys. You pretty much don't need them anymore. And that's an institutional grade security. I also like the fact where uh, they have two factor authentication. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's going to have a lot of value with the hedge funds. So uh, you need it. They have signing thresholds. Uh, for example, if you have a massive team of hedge fund investors, uh, the signing thresholds would mean that it has to be signed by everyone uh, to gain approval. So unanimity or whatnot, or a certain number of people. Either way, it's looking forward into the future and anything which really looks forward into the future is the projects I myself wanna be in. Um, obviously not financial advice here, so I'm not actually shilling you anything and I'm not telling you to go buy it, but I'm, I am telling you that this is a coin to have on your watch list to look out for and we've experienced a nice retracement as it is. So uh, let's talk about private keys. Uh, and I mentioned this here, our assets are realistically not in control. For example, if Binance owns our assets, we don't actually have our assets. They aren't ours to control, they're not ours, they can sell, trade them off exchanges. I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen stuff on 4chan saying, oh, okay, um, this has been traded off of exchanges and this is not ours or whatnot. And there's been errors and marketing errors and whatnot. But um, the main thing is that a custody wallet provider, and uh, if we're using an exchange, we don't actually own it. This means, uh, if these exchanges aren't very well regulated, as a lot of these exchanges actually aren't, this means they can get shut down. And if they're shut down, this means your assets are frozen. And if your assets are frozen, what does that mean? You could be stuck holding these assets in an exchange, not being able to touch them, potentially watching price fall for a period of two, three, four, possibly may, you may never touch them again. And this is where Credo comes in. So it provides a solution for these centralized exchanges, for these institutions, um, there's too much regulatory risk and Curator solves this in the fact it's decentralized. There's no central authority. It therefore bypasses the regulations and the MPC is crucial uh, in the sense it avoids counterparty risk, it in, uh, increases the compliance of centralized institutions. And if you think about it, Binance is a hundred millions of dollars uh, market cap institution, billion dollars uh, worth very easily. And they actually have the potential. They are going to give that much money in. Um, and as a creator holder, the benefits you gain are as follows. There's customizable governments, peer-to-peer -peer trading. I think the most important bit for as being a creator holder is um, actually the peer-to-peer -peer trading. I think that for institutions is going to be very good as well as decentralized trading uh, and security. Security is obviously key. Um, now, if we're going to look at the tokenomics of Curado, I want to have a look with uh, in with that with you guys in a second. But um, just very quickly, you can stake Curado for 10.1% APY. And uh, their investors is also something key to look at. They have Coinbase, Wintermute, Celsius, Borderless Capital and Quant. Um, and what this means is if these big companies partnering early on, uh, if they're very early investors like Coinbase early vent, uh, venture capital, or whatnot, they're gonna invest and they wanna use their services. They wanna leverage their services 
which means more total value lock and, and Curedo as a token has more value therefore. So I think this is a great project and I've said this on my Twitter here um, and I'm going to give you guys some key entry points and whatnot, but I just want to look at um, some other key metrics here. So I definitely recommend you guys look at this article on solving blockchain's billion dollar problem. I'm going to link it in the description for you guys, not a problem. Uh, and now on to something else. So they're multi-computational, uh, multi-party computation is something you guys need to understand. I would say do not invest in this protocol if you do not understand multi-party computation um, and the benefits of blockchain-based MPC. The very fact Curator has done this is its uniqueness in itself. So aside from having a brilliant team, a brilliant bag team and connections with Binance, who will be in all the big exchanges, they have um, possibly the best security out there uh, for MPC. And really this is, the movement we're seeing right now from institutions, Curilo is going to be a big part of that, I believe. Unless unless some new next generational technology comes into play and we've not seen it yet and gains mass adoption. But I think Curilo's community is quite strong. So, and this is something I wanted to mention to you guys. So coming soon to Curilo's network, actually it's already happened, but every month Curilo validators will take their network income, scoop up Curilo in the open market, What's going to happen is it's going to increase scarcity in supporting supply. So if validators are buying back, and um, I think a lot of the community is quite bullish on this, what this is, it's um, it's very, very big, very, very big. I also want to talk about Curido and uh, Aave. Uh, I think I believe Aave partnered with um, Fireblock. I believe they partnered with Fireblock, and Curido essentially offers a service better than Fireblock. So they had a very unanimous vote with Fireblock. If Curator partners with Aave, the amount of total value locked and utility of Curator's token is going to increase exponentially. So um, that's something to look out for, guys. Uh, Aave is probably the best, one of the most safest uh, DeFi protocols out there um, that people know of. So uh, finally, to do with Curato, I just want to have a look at its... Uh, I like Masari because it uh, gives you kind of a very nice indication of all the statistics. Something to note is it's down 50% from all time high, right? So one thing I wanted to uh, mention with you guys is the actual fundamentals of the project have not changed. The project's not changed direction. Um, the project has not changed its movement. It's aiming for the same goals. So price, to be honest with you guys, is very irrelevant. Um, it's an Ethereum type token. Uh, but it's interoperable, so it's not as much of a problem as just being a purely Ethereum token. And it is a layer two. So it is a layer two and it is a layer three, um, and which means it's going to be built on a layer one blockchain, whatnot. I think it's um, extremely interesting. I think you guys need to follow it. Uh, I believe join the community, Telegram, Twitter. They're always putting out uh, new resources. I had a look at their all their white papers and light papers and yellow papers and mediums. I think as a community, Curator is doing amazingly. Um, if I bring it back here, yeah, here it all is. And if we just can have a brief look at their roadmap, uh, their mainnet's already live, which is a big deal. Uh, their testnet's already live. Now, their version two mainnet is something I am looking forward to immensely. So it's a complete transition to DAO governance, right? Now, that's amazing, guys. DAO governance, decentralized governance, is going to be huge for Curator, right? That's when the institutions are going to start coming in. That's when they're going to be saying, okay, hey, look, actually, I can control my assets. I can hold them, and I know I control them, and they're safe and secure. And I can do that without the need of trusting these centralized exchanges. Or perhaps if centralized exchanges implement them, they can then trust the centralized exchanges and then they can use them. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I think this is quite important to read as well. I think a lot of people were scared with their unlocking as of uh, next month. Um, but realistically, projects are only sold if they don't have great value. If investors see them rising, they tend to rise in price as well. Uh, Bitcoin in the market is crashing. There's a lot of uncertainty, Omicron, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm going to put this through in the video later, but I think don't focus on the price too much. Focus more to do with the fundamentals. The fundamentals are key. And in this channel, we look at the fundamentals and we look at the price on the side. Price is always secondary to the fundamentals. So that's enough, guys, with Credo. 
Um, I really like this guys, sign in, join the network, speak to a specialist. I believe they're based in London and you can actually contact the team on Twitter, Telegram. They get back to you very, very fast guys. And um, yeah, I'm just very, very interested in this project. Uh, but enough about that. I'm gonna show you something interesting about Luna. So I am a big fan of Luna. I've not actually put any threads out there on my Twitter. Um, before that though, I recommend giving this one a read. So this Medium article on the tokenomics of Credo is definitely something you need to read um, 100%. Actually, they have very nice diagrams here uh, explaining the supply tokenomics. And I think when you're investing, you guys, you wanna be going to the extent where you can understand this, right? So exchange fees as a market maker, the importance of the market maker, the importance of the customer user, and the importance of the validator, right? The three key people and you have the trader on the side, right? You need to understand this if you guys want to invest. So I'm going to link this all in the description. Um, this is a bit more complicated than I want to go into. Uh, I might go into it in a later video, but uh, for now I want to talk about Luna because Luna is looking amazing, guys. Luna is looking great. So what I want to talk about is total value locked on all chains. Now, a lot of you guys who are on Twitter might have seen this already, but for my YouTube audience, I really want to show you guys and expose you guys to what Luna is, as you guys know, Luna is a ecosystem. It's an ecosystem, a layer one blockchain, an ecosystem uh, that's been more and more developed since its Columbus 5 launch. But I think what you need to look at amazingly about Luna is Luna's scarcity is decreasing at such a fast rate. So if we look at total value locked in all chains, this is something I wanted to show you. Luna is second to only Ethereum. It's overtaken Binance Smart Chain, it's overtaken Avalanche, and Luna only has 13 protocols, guys. 13 protocols. Its code's not hard, its code is not hard for developers to build on. They're in the process of building on it, it's getting audited, and then it's getting placed on Luna. And if you're staking Luna, you'll be eligible for these via airdrops. Guys, what I want to tell you guys is this is amazing. Look at all the percentage decreases in these protocols. You can really see which DeFi systems are working or not. So Aurora, for example, is another one to look at, right? I'm quite bullish on Aurora as well, maybe a separate video later. This is in a bear market, guys, you can identify some of the best things, right? So really what's changing? What What is what is making waves in the market, right? Luna, uh, Solana, I mean, these are just some of the best chains out there. And I've been talking about them for a while, right? Um, if you're following me, you'll know this. I'll keep you guys updated and whatever, right? I'll keep you guys updated on the best chains out there. But none of this is ever financial advice. I'm never going to shield to you guys. That's something I promised myself I'm never going to do. And I think it's the worst kinds of people. I actually started on YouTube because people kept shilling too much and not providing unbiased information, which everyone needs to know. So here's another thing I want you guys to see about Luna is the circulating supply. So look at this. Luna's price has been consistently increasing. You could say an uptrend for the last six months, right? An uptrend. But look at this. We got to a stage where the circulating supply increased. And then since then, we've only seen it fall. As the burn rate mechanisms were put in place in Columbus 5, we've only seen it fall as more and more protocols have launched. And going back to it, guys, Luna only, only has 13 protocols launched. 13. Now, if you multiply that to get avalanches, you're looking at a figure of eight. So eight times, say, more total value locked. Eight times more total value locked, and you're potentially looking at total value locked in Ethereum. And um, the market cap is far, far different. Uh, the market cap has a reason for being different. I'll get into that later. Uh, Luna will never have a high market cap or as high as a market cap as maybe Ethereum or Bitcoin, for example. However, um, its price and its tokens are going to have great, great value. So, yeah, I'm going to put this more on my Twitter, guys. Uh, give my Twitter a look through. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video on Carido and Luna, and I hope you guys learned something about it. I'm just going to say from now that some of the projects I'm looking at, I'm just going to keep posting them on my Twitter and then I'm going to post them on my YouTube. Uh, it takes me a couple of hours to make the YouTube videos, to do the editing, etc. So bear with me on that. But if you follow my Twitter, I have it all there. And I've got a nice giveaway going on right now where I'm giving out $350 in Curido. And as I'll mention one last time, guys, all you guys have to do is uh, follow me. You have to retweet, tag your favorite creator and comment what crypto you would like to see on a thread on next. 
I tend to do the thread and then I tend to do the video straight after. Um, a cheeky little uh, tip for the future is Scallop DeFi is something I want you guys to look at. Obviously not financial advice, but a lot of these creators have this in their in the back of their heads and they won't tell you guys, but I'm telling you guys, guys, have a look at this. It's DeFi banking and I'm going to put a video out there. It is um, something you guys need to know about. Scallop, join their community, have a look at their partnerships. They're doing amazing, guys. Guys, don't sleep on Scallop. I'm not shilling it to you guys, but um, if we look at here, for example, just very, very briefly, um, they're partnering with uh, the UAE Minister of Foreign Trade State. They've not actually mentioned any explicit partnerships, but they're in the works, right? If these things take time, especially if you're a bank, um, we just read here, the pitch is loading. Um, and 50% of Scallop stake for four years. So guys, that's why I'm extremely bullish on Scallop. But aside from that, um, I hope you guys enjoy my thoughts on Credo, on Luna, and uh, leave a comment what you'd like to see next or uh, what you thought about the video. And I'll take it on as feedback, guys. Thank you for watching so much uh, and take care.